Hi guys, uh, I'm in my studio again today. Uh, today it's a sunny day and we're supposed to have a warm up. Uh, what they're calling is supposed to be in the high in the 20s today and that's a warm up even though at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock this morning I went out my back porch to check the temperature and at 9 o'clock this morning it was 6 degrees and that and that's a warm up so hopefully it'll get warmer this afternoon. At any rate, um, the piece behind me is a 24 by 24 cradled panel. It's been sitting in my basement for God knows how long. Um, I even had to take soap and water over the, the top of it uh, this morning and uh, wash it off because it had dust and dirt and God knows what else on it. So I, I cleaned it up and it has several coats already on it. I know what we can see is red, I can see some black, and here and there I can see some green coming through it. So I don't know what else is under there, have no idea. Um, and I do have the edges taped. But what I want to do today is to talk to you about texture. A lot of you have been asking uh, in your comments about texture in cold wax and texture in um, acrylic as well. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, you can, even with a cold wax, and this is going to be a cold wax piece, uh, you can, when you start out, instead of gessoing your board, you can put uh, Liquitex Super Heavy Gesso right on top of it. Uh, let me get that. I'll be right back. Okay, here's a Liquitex Super Heavy Gesso. I don't know if that's backwards to you or not, but I get it in these big jars from AC Moore um, Craft Store, and it's buy one, get one. It's quite a, expensive for this big one. I think it's $34, but it was a buy one, get one, so it was 50% off. And this particular size is, I have no idea. I'm going to say it's a quart, but I'm not sure what size it is. It's strange. It's not listed on here. At any rate, um, before you do anything to your cradle panel or to your paper or whatever you're using, you could use this on um, uh, Arches oil paper. You can use it on um, the multimedia board. You can use it on cradle panel. You can use it on just about any surface that you can gesso and you can make a lot of good texture with this before you add the cold wax and it's just like a gesso and then you let it dry you have to let it dry for a couple of I would say a day 24 36 hours something like that and uh, you can make yourself some great texture right off the bat but the only bad thing about that but is that wherever you put the texture, you're stuck with it. Uh, you can't change it. So um, a lot of times with my cold wax, I will not do this. Occasionally I'll use it. I'll do not do this and I'll add things such as sand, marble dust, you can add uh, uh, gravel, you can use just about anything uh, into uh, cold wax to make the texture. So I'm going to make some texture this morning and after after you put texture on the board you have to let it dry for at least three or four days because it's so thick it needs time to set up. So I'm going to film this now and I'm not going to film the actual painting of the piece for three or four days from now. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to uh, mix up your texture and, and how to put it onto your board. Okay. video or my camera uh, it's actually my uh, my uh, cell phone I want to show you the different things that you can use for uh, texture uh, and a lot of these I have collected uh, myself uh, out of the street now this is uh, just a large gravel that I found uh, I was walking on a trail one time and this gorgeous stuff was there and I took a couple handfuls of it and put it in a bag and I can use that. That is your large uh, gravel and over here I can take it off with one hand is uh, smaller sand 
that like you can you can find uh, down towards the beach and it's not the real fine sand and there's a lot of dirt and everything else in this and I really don't care because whatever's in here is going to give me some good texture so you can uh, go to the beach and get sand it might be from the beach and here's some more sand that I found, and I, I found that on a volleyball court. So there's three different kinds of sands right there. This is beach sand, volleyball sand, and uh, large gravel. You can also purchase sand at the uh, craft store. Uh, here it is here, and it's called U Unity Sand, and it comes in different colors. There's uh, uh, kind of a beigey color and here's some in blue so you can use just about anything uh, also you can buy sand here's Matisse large sand dry medium and you can get that in different uh, large small whatever so that's that's by Matisse and I do believe that Liquitex and some of the other guys have uh, different kinds of things that you can put in cold wax as well. So Matisse at, uh, has that. You can also at the craft store buy these beads. They make, and they come in many different colors. You can put those in for texture. Uh, my favorite, oh, here in this bag over here is sawdust. You can add sawdust, you can add uh, pencil sharpenings, you can add just about anything that you want to add. Uh, my favorite thing is marble dust. And that's what this is here. And uh, I got this from uh, Frederick's on, online uh, from one of the uh, art, art stores and you get a big bag of it. And that big bag has lasted me I'm gonna say seven years and I still have a bunch of it. So I just poured some into a container because I use marble dust more than I use anything. Um, one thing I will say about the sands is when you mix up sand with cold wax, uh, make sure that you put it on a uh, paper plate or something that you can uh, throw away because if you get that sand on your palette, you're gonna have sand everywhere and it's real gritty and it might ruin your uh, brayers and different things. So when you use sand, just make sure that you put it on a paper plate or something like that, that you can uh, throw, throw out and uh, get rid of it. So um, I'm gonna mix some of this up right now. And like I said, you can use just about anything. I do have a lot of pencil uh, uh, shavings that I dumped a pencil sharpener into a plastic bag and I uh, you probably could use tea leaves you probably could use coffee you probably could use uh, glitter you, you can use just about anything as long as you can get it to stick and I'm going to show you that now I usually use uh, gravel the large sand and marble dust those are the three things that I use a lot of but um, some of my students have used the uh, sawdust and the pencil sharpenings and they like that as well so we'll see i'll show you how to mix to all of this, this up uh, and what you're going to do is I'm, I'm going to mix some marble dust and some sand and gravel so i'm going to take some marble dust and spill it all over the place i don't know why i didn't get a spoon but there you can see it on my plate now I'm going to mix some cold wax into this. I, I need some more cold wax. You need as much as you can there's no uh, formulas for how much cold wax. It all depends on how much marble dust or how much sand or whatever you have, but you want it to be mixed in there really good. I think I need a little bit more.
Okay, now that is marble dust. You can see how thick that is. Now you can put more cold wax into it if you want to, but for now I'm just gonna let that be. Now I'm gonna go into my gravel. Pull that away. And I'm gonna put quite a bit of this in. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of sand into it. Get a little bit more dust, uh, cold wax. Mix that in. Now I'm going to add some gravel into it. gravel into it. Now that is how you mixed up your texture. I could even add more gravel into it if I want, but that's enough for now. Um, I might add that if you are doing uh, an acrylic and you want to add texture, you could add all of these different items that I just showed you, but use uh, something like gel medium, uh, heavy gel medium, something like that, that it would hold it. And then, um, or you could use uh, the uh, super heavy gesso, you could use molding paste, you can add any of these items to your uh, painting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the small phone off and then I'm gonna to go to my iPad and I'm gonna show you how to apply this. One thing you can also do, which I failed to mention, if you use that super heavy gesso in the beginning, before you put cold wax on, you can push into it uh, different stencils and stamps and things like that to get um, some texture. I rarely do that because uh, I would rather uh, not I, I don't want people to look at my paintings and say, oh, she used a stamp here, or here she used big, uh, bubble wrap, et cetera, et cetera. I want everything to be a surprise. So uh, I'm going to turn this off now and put this, uh, put my other camera on so you can see me applying these two different things. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is I this. will um, give you a uh, close up of what I'm doing, but I'll do that when I'm downloading it. So I'm going to add the, the marble dust and also the sand and gravel to this now. And uh, even though this has a co uh, coat of, uh, several coats of cold wax on it, you can do this really at any, at any time uh, while you're painting at any layer. Um, I'm gonna do it now because uh, I've decided kind of what I want to do. So, but this is good and hard. It's like I say, it's been dry for a year or two. So um, if, if, I, if there was nothing on this, what I probably would do is add um, gesso. I would add my gesso first, and then I would, I would do this. So here we go. And one thing I did fail to mention that you saw me add cold wax, just clear cold wax to those mixes. You can use colored wax if you want. Let's, uh, let's say if you wanted it to be blue uh, instead of clear, and you could put it on, but it's all gonna get covered up anyway, so I don't usually use uh, a colored wax when I add my texture. So here we go. Now this is the gravel. I'm just gonna pick it up, and normally I would do this with this laying down. I hope I can get it to stick.
you see something and it's not sticking, get some plain cold wax and put it on top. That will help it to stick. For texture, you can also add just plain cold wax and just put it on thickly. You see what I'm doing here? That's just cold wax, and that's going to dry with texture. Just gonna let this dry for a while. It's gonna take a couple days for it to truly dry. This is just plain cold wax. Okay, now I'm going to put on the um, marble dust and the marble dust is easier to work with much much easier and it's very very thick as you can see it's thicker than just the, the plain cold wax This is the marble dust that I'm adding. One bad thing about texture is once you put it on, you're kind of stuck with it unless you go into it with some really heavy sandpaper and sand it down. I'm going to put some marble dust up here just to hold some of that a little bit better. Okay, now that's my texture. Now what I'm going to let that do is I'm going to let this dry, like I said, for at least, as thick as I have it on, I'm going to say four days. So this is going to be in my studio drying, and when it's ready, I will bring it down. And you can see I don't, ha I have it at different widths. Everything is not ending at the same place. I have this coming out. Maybe this needs to go out just a little bit further. Make sure you get your edges. Don't let the texture on the edge. Okay. So that's texture, and like I said, you can go over, you can just use cold wax, you don't have to put anything in it. And um, when this is dry, what you're going to do is take your hand over it and brush it, and anything that's not stuck will come off. So we'll do that when it's uh, good and dry. So. 
Thanks for watching, and after this is ready, we will go further with it.